I'm Connie Stevens on Rolling Art Television. Welcome to Rolling Art. We invite you to join us on an all-encompassing artistic journey through the mind of design. Now let's join rolling art expert Ken Gross. We're at the start of an absolutely killer weekend. Open house at Peach of Horses, followed by the Los Angeles Roadster Show out in Pomona, followed by the Concours on Rodeo in town. And here we are at Peach of Horses' fabulous shop. There are always a lot of cars under construction here, and the open house gives you a chance to see the cars, see the parts, see the people. It's just incredible. Here's a roadster under construction, and here's Alex Exidius. Good Welcome everybody here to our open house. It's turned out to be terrific. Weather's great, cars are great. Everything's and you're great. great. Well, thank you. <laughs> SoCal is doing a promotion with Fender guitars, so the Fender people were rocking and rolling, but it's really about cars. I mean, blondes too, but it's basically really about cars. Guys bring every possible thing from rat rods and rat bikes to some of the uh, most beautifully finished customs you can imagine. Tom Taylor can tell us all about it. We're at SoCal Speed Shop in Pomona and we're here with Jim Green and Jim Crook and they have quite a cool story about the assassin, the top fuel dragster, top fuel rail, whatever you want to call it, slingshot. Where was this thing? Where did it come from? Okay, well, I originally built this car in the fall of 1967, raced it in the second half of the 67 season and the 68 season. Ultimately, at that time, I sold the car to go back to college. In its long journey, it then eventually journeyed to Prince George, British Columbia. Ultimately, I was to find this car with the help of Don Ewald, who has quite an extensive website called We Did It For Love on Old Front Engine Dragsters. And if you ever have a chance to see that, that site, it's fantastic and it's huge. So if you get a chance, check it out. It's wedidditforlove.com. Correct. Exactly correct. So with Don's help, I found the car, which was, uh, as I say, in Penticton, British Columbia. I talked to Steve Kendall, and this was in the spring of 2001. So how did you know about the car, and how did you get involved? On the way back home from 2001 Hot Rod Reunion, my wife and I are thinking we should restore a car. I like the overhead cam Ford 427s. I've been collecting them since 1971. And had 18 of them, I believe. 19. Right? You. you have 19. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, we found an article from Arlington about Jim Crook's assassin top fuel car, and it, boing, everything hit. So anyway, Jim Crook comes into town, and we talk. He comes to my shop, and we're looking through a bunch of my camera parts, and we find the original valve covers off of this car. The original valve covers that were on the camera motor. I'd had them for maybe, I don't know, 25 years, bought them in a garage full of parts. So ultimately, Jim and his shop and his guys assembled the chassis back together. So it's all the original chassis minus about that much where the engine is. Okay. So it's all the original Don Long pipe from 1967. We added basically 8.3 pounds of new tubing. Everything else is <laughs> yeah. original. Okay. And then the, bat, this, the sheet metal on this is new, right? No, no. not exactly. No. This, right. this how, is how, a whole story unto itself. The, right. the sheet metal from the engine forward is all original. The, we had the lower side panels for the back. We had a cowl, but we did not have the tail because that had been taken off sometime around 1975-ish and thrown in the woods in Prince George, British Columbia, which was a long ways from where we ultimately got the car back. And you know, people had searched for the tail and had never found it. So five months into this, I'm sitting at my desk, I get a phone call and the guy says, I have something you want. And my answer was, yeah, what's that? And he says, I have the tail section to the dragster. And quite honestly, I didn't believe him thought that he knew where it was because he was a friend of the fellow who had owned the drag strip in Prince George. That fellow has since passed away, so he was of no age. So this fellow, whose name is Pat Wilkinson, found this tail section, would not take a dime for it, wanted us to have it because we were restoring the car. I mean, really That's cool. That's wild, wild. The whole thing was just one of those things that was destined to be, and all these things happened, just like the body deal. I mean, finding this body 
part had been taken off the car and lost in the woods. It was a little crushed. But nonetheless, it was restorable. And I think one of the neat things about this car is everybody who was involved in the car originally, with the exception of George Cerny Jr., who's no longer with us, was involved in the restoration. Tom Kelly, who came out of retirement to do his lettering like he'd done before. Don Long made new steering wheel, brake levers, brake pedals, clutch pedal, all of those parts. So, you know, Tom Han has been involved in it. You know, so it's been really a, an interesting deal. It's amazing. Maybe it should be called serendipity instead of uh, assassin, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's probably not a bad thought. Well, Jim and Jim, thank you. This is, this is a great story. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, we're firing the cars at six, so you need to be over here about five tell. What are you doing? We're turning the motor over backwards in case there's any remaining fuel in the cylinder that pumps it out. There's a lot of action at Pete's. The police are there to make sure there aren't any burnouts. You can stand out there and just watch people going by like that Roadster with a 409 Chevy in it. This year, something new, they decided to imitate a little bit the Cackle Fest at Bakersfield where they line up a bunch of fuel dragsters and uh, light them up. You can just hear them pop and snap. And they did that with the uh, Assassin. Everybody could feel and hear and sense what a top fuel motor sounds like. Uh, I don't think I'd want to be sitting there breathing nitro fumes, but uh, you can see from the way people are covering their ears, it is ear splitting and the ground literally vibrates. Lots of fun. But the best thing to do here is just walk around and dig the scene. There's so much to see. At the end of an evening, you think to yourself, how could there be more? There's a lot more on Saturday at LA Roadster Show. Barely have any room in there. Coming up next, Ken Gross will uncover the annual Los Angeles Roadster Show. And he attempts a getaway. I just stole this car. Then, we'll take a look at the judging process at the Concor on Rodeo. Welcome back to Rolling Art. L.A. Roadsters, Father's Day, 2003, my favorite place to be. You never know who's going to be there. I mean, here's Jeff Beck rolling in on a Brizio built Roadster. It's about Roadsters. There's well over 500 every year. But if you like coupes, there's coupes, too. This is one of the newest a car that was a Riddler contender. It's a never-ending parade of wonderful, wonderful custom and hot rod stuff. It is Norm Grabowski showing off one of his carved skulls an exhibit for everybody. You can buy parts. You could probably go there with a Visa card and uh, go from vendor to vendor and roll away with an entire car. I just stole this car. We're in a 1932 Ford that was built by Pichu Forrest's uh, SoCal Speed Shop for Kirk F. White. The uh, engine was built initially by Don Spencer, who was a legendary hot rodder who built some fabulous cars over the years, including a 32 Roadster that won the uh, first hot rod class at Pebble Beach. Uh, Don built a number of, uh, of engines for many famous people, including Carroll Shelby. This was the last engine he ever built. It's a 302 V8 with a ton of horsepower, redone by Ed Pink because it had a cam in it that was a little too wild for the street. Hold on. This car has a Brookville steel reproduction body. The uh, transmission is a four-speed, I think it's a rock crusher. A long, long throws, but good go in every gear. Because it just wants to go. We're on our way back to the Roadster Show where 
most people are standing around looking at hot rods, we've had a great opportunity to drive one of the best in show. In fact, I'm just going to toss Michael out of here and just take the car and go home. <laughs> Gotta be skinny to get these things. Well, we're here at the uh, Los Angeles Roadster Club Father's Day meet uh, with Kirk White, who has just and very generously let me drive his 32 Roadster. And uh, what a car it is uh, with a Don Spencer Ed Pink V8 that puts out God knows how much how much horsepower uh, in a in a car that's got uh, racing tires, 18-inch wheels, uh, nice tight steering. Uh, this is what I would call a hot rod. Uh, Kirk, uh, how did this car come to be? Well, a couple of years before Doan passed, I had asked him to build me a good, serious hot rod 5-liter motor. And uh, bless his heart, he did it and got it done just before he passed. And um, we waited a long time to come up with the right kind of scheme. And finally, it occurred to me that, you know, Pete and his outfit at SoCal would be the people to do up a car around the motor and that's exactly what we did so well and this car I think it's fair to say pays a little homage to Don Spencer's 32 Roadster it, it does in uh, but we tried to do it as if Don were doing it today uh, one of the things he'd always wanted to do was run the Pan American road race and so that's one of the reasons why this car kind of has a road race theme to it with the taller tires and the road racing and the driving lamps and just a little bit of a European flair. And uh, we're kind of hoping that if he were here, he'd give it a good nod. So. Well, I, I think he would. Uh, there's a Ferrari steering wheel. There are some Lucas driving lights. The front spring has a leather gator. Yeah. And there's, there's definitely a sports car feel to it. But I got to tell you, I think I could blow off any sports car we came encounter with. <laughs> it's a great hot rod, boy. It's, it, that motor, was, it took forever to get it all settled just the way we wanted and Ed Pink had, had to wrestle with it a little because Doan ever, always built everything about 11 tenths, but it's a sensational engine, it's a sensational hot rod. Well, all credit to, uh, to you for conceptualizing this and for Pete Chaporis and his guys for building it. That's Many... where the real credit goes is with those guys. I mean, they, uh, they really did a bang up job. Many thanks, Greg. This was a treat. Appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Thanks for taking the car out. <laughs> and bringing it back. <laughs> There's a lot of great stuff here. Here's another Brizio built car that was done for Eric Clapton. You see it's got fenders for those uh, rainy English days, but it's the real deal. Steel body and um, all the horsepower a top notch Ford engine can put out. Pontiac taillights. Brizio has a great formula. They keep building those cars and people keep buying them. Here's Jeff Beck's car. Another beauty from Brizio. Uh, Beck's been his customer for probably 15 years. He's built a lot of cars, and uh, it's unfortunate they go back to the UK where most of us will never get to see them again, but Jeff drives them. Time for Beck to take off, and time for us to leave this show too, but we'll be back next year. We wouldn't miss it. Still to come, we'll take a look at the judging process at the Concours on Rodeo. I'm Ken Gross, you're on Rolling Art, and we're here at the Concours on Rodeo, uh, a fabulous Father's Day event on, on beautiful, sunny Rodeo Drive. We've been here before, but this year we're, we're covering the show a little differently because I'm the chief judge of the Concours on Rodeo. We're going to look at the show from a judge's perspective. Well, here we are on Rodeo Drive, uh, a spectacular setting for a car show. You know, they start the night before literally rolling out a carpet 
that they put the cars on and this all has to be done in a 24-hour period. The cars themselves are the best that the LA area has to offer and I used to say when I lived there if you can't find any car you want in a 30-mile radius of Los Angeles well you haven't looked hard enough. Happy Father's Day to all, to all of us who qualify and uh, thank you for coming if you're a car nut it's a Father's Day present, and we appreciate that you're here. A couple of like housekeeping formalities, really. Uh, we'd appreciate if you would welcome each of the owners and thank them very much for bringing their car. It's always so important. Uh, please look at every car. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I kind of walked into that, but you've all been at shows where someone goes by. I mean, I think we've got some fabulous cars out here, but the, uh, there's always a car that might not be uh, the eventual winner and there's a tendency to say well we'll kind of walk around this one. And, uh, there's a total of 100 points possible and there are five uh, criteria. Engineering impact, uh, basically how technically innovative was the car. Styling and design, uh, is it attractive, is it stunning, is it clever, is it beautiful. Uh, impact, and impact is how do, you, how do you feel this car affects the people who are looking at it. And then there's personal impact, which is what you like to own. Car, how does it affect you? And finally, um, and very importantly, restoration, quality, accuracy. Um, if something is obviously over restored, uh, I'd suggest you take a point or two off. Um, and from the first place winners in each of the eight uh, classes, uh, we would like to have as a team your vote for best of show. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the cars that you judge. We've briefed the judges, and now it's time to go to work. We've got a fabulous team here. Here's Chad McQueen, Steve McQueen's son, uh, some very knowledgeable Beverly Hills guys. And I work with Shin Takei, who is really a Ferrari guy, uh, but he, uh, he's starting to learn about hot rods and he really actually has great general automotive knowledge. Here we're talking to Mike Regalia, who is in charge of the, the fabulous Nethercut collection. There's an Alfa Romeo Flying Star, actually that's an Isotta Fraschini version of it. Um, this man with a Dalmat Peugeot is kind enough to start it up for us. Um, I call that the California State Inspection, but we do need to see if cars will start and lights will work. That's sometimes the tiebreaker that makes the difference between a winner or a loser. Here's Chip Connors' fabulous Type 57C Bugatti, um, a wonderful car, supercharged. Here's Alan Taylor showing us one of his cars. We get into the details, looking at every nook and cranny and crevasse. Car judging is a little bit subjective, a lot objective, and in many ways, both time consuming, painstaking, and a mental challenge. When it's all done and we've got the reports from the judges, Shin and I go over everything to make sure that we've been fair with each car and that we've been consistent across a class. Andy, how do you get a group of cars this good, this fast? It's hard. We did it very, very fast, but um, it just worked out. We just have a lot of friends in the car wall that people like to bring their car here because it's a really unique and different kind of show than any other show in the country. So that's that's usually the least of our problems is getting good cars. No hesitations next year. We're, we're on, right? Oh, we are definitely on. <laughs> Okay, here's Bruce Meyer, who's uh, Mercedes-Benz 300 SC, won its class, best Mercedes-Benz, and a car that was owned by Clark Gable. Bruce, you've had this car quite a while. Right, we bought it from his widow in 1981, so it's almost 23 years, and it runs like new. It's almost completely original. The only thing we did is do some upholstering on the seats. So if we sit in it, we, we can't sit where Gable sat anymore? We sit in the back seat. If he ever, was, you know, knowing Gable, he probably had fun in the back seat of that car. He probably did. Uh, Bruce had a, another car here today, an absolute wonderful classic hot rod, the Doan Spencer 32 Ford. Uh, a car so popular now that Kirk White brought a car that's kind of a clone of that yeah. car uh, here today. And we, we did have some great hot rods, I think you'd agree. You know, this was the most difficult show to judge. I mean, to try and pick a winner from that, and I think they did a great job. Bruce, thanks so much for bringing uh, your cars it's today. It's great fun being here, and it's great fun, and all the best to a rolling art. Eleven RS, our first winner of the day. It's a Porsche, one of the greatest sports cars in the world. Ken Gross to present the trophy. The 1953 Ferrari 250 MM, Steve Tillock.
Speaking of elegance, this car was once owned by the very elegant Fred Astaire. It's now part of the Robert Margie Peterson collection right here in Beverly Hills. 1927 Rolls-Royce Phantom One Town Car. 1932 Street Rod, Mark Van Buskirk from Crown Point, Indiana. Maserati Zagato Double Bubble owned by David and Ginny Sidoric from Beverly Hills, California. First place winner is magnificent, Isada Frascini, the Flying Spur Roadster, ladies and gentlemen. Very expensive coach built Maybach, owned by Dorothy, Dorothy and Harold Meyerman from Pasadena. A Maybach co chairman's trophy, the Maybach. This Bugatti of Chip Connors is a beautifully maintained uh, restoration. It was done a few years ago, but the car is spectacular. Of course, it was to begin with a Jean Bugatti design, but a combination of great looks and great presence carried the day for this car. We just concluded another fabulous concours here on Rodeo Drive. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Check us out at www.rollingarttv.com. We'll see you next time. I'm Ken Gross for Rolling Art. Coming up next week on Rolling Art, we'll go NASCAR racing virtually in the NASCAR store at Universal Studios. Then Bruce Meyer will take us on a tour of his personal gallery. Hi, I'm Bruce Meyer and welcome to the gallery.